It's the most famous shopping street in the world, in the heart of Britain's capital city. A mile and a half long, with 30 million visitors each year. With some of the world's most famous shops, biggest stars, and busiest stations. Sorry, guys, stand back for me. What does it take to keep it running 24 hours a day? The busiest street in the world, so it needs constant attention. Seven days a week. Hey, clear off. You're going to be arrested on suspicion of attempted theft. Are you ready, London? A street that never sleeps. This sort of thing wouldn't happen anywhere else. Oxford Street. Coming up. Skimming devices on cash machines. The Oxford Street Police hunt down the gangs responsible. Simon Cowles coming to Oxford Street. Can the Paps get a snap? Just look at the state of that. That is incredible, that is. And bread of heaven. It's St David's Day at John Lewis, and the store's in full voice. <laughs> Oxford Street has its own team of specialist police, tasked with keeping it safe for all those that use it. They're known as Orb. It's 9 a.m. and one of the Orb team, PC Barry Nichols, has been called to a West End bank. Southwest one over. Can you just tell us what number it is, please? 35. He's off to deal with the latest example of a crime that's afflicting Oxford Street and city centres up and down the UK. ATM or cash machine fraud. We've got a uh, suspect device that's been put on one of the cash points. Inside the bank, all becomes clear. A member of staff has removed the devices to show them to the police. Ah. Card clips. They're not actual readers. Do you know how they work? No. Basically, the device is stuck inside the machine like that. So you put your card into the machine, so it goes underneath, works as normal, and when the card goes to go out, it gets stuck. Then the machine says out of order and the person thinks they've had their card eaten. Uh. The person will stand near them and try and get the pin number. Uh. The person will walk away and all they'll do is unclip that and the card will pop out. So they've got a pin number and a card. PC Nichols and Rickett asked to inspect the bank's CCTV to try and spot the criminal. And after a few minutes of studying the footage... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's him, isn't it? Yeah, he's just lining it up, isn't he, to get it right. Moments later, an unwitting member of the public becomes the first victim. He just keeps putting a hand up to an empty, and that's when the little clip will have just held it in. The skimmer waits around, looking for the moment to retrieve the device and the card it's trapped. Is he about there? He is. PCs, Nichols and Rickett, on the other hand, are hoping for a clear shot of his face. Especially there. That was awesome. Yeah. What time was it? 10.08 in 51 is a good facial shot. ATM skimming is on the rise in the UK. Fraud from skimmed cards has risen 15%, according to latest figures. But few places have the resources Oxford Street does to combat it. Barry and colleague take the device and CCTV evidence back to the station. It will now go to a specialist team to see if they can identify the suspect. What it means for the Orb team is there are cash machine gangs on the loose in the West End and they need to do everything they can to disrupt them. Doing his bit is PC Darren Bond, part of the team's plain clothes squad. Today, he's on patrol with colleague Hatis Iper. One of the ATMs around Oxford Street will be having a device, a skimming device on it, on a daily basis. It's an ongoing war. They're on the lookout for the telltale signs of the card skimmers. And as they patrol, the team spots something. Just been keeping an eye on a guy as we've been walking down the road. Probably walked along behind him for about 200 metres. And uh, now he's crossed over, but he's going back the way he's come. Yeah, not quite sure what to make of him. The man has stopped at several cash machines. Darren thinks he might be planting card skimmers on them. A definite job to see two males standing very close and observing the ATMs just down here. Darren glances at the machines the men were at. It 
it's not clear if they have a skimming device on them, and he doesn't want to get too close. You've got to be very aware of the third eye. They may have left watching the machines if there is a device on them. Darren and Hatice call in more officers to covertly follow the two, and the officers report the men are heading towards a bank. Sorry. When they're at the cash point, bang. Later, Darren finds a lot more than he bargained for. And it has a pinhole camera here. In the dog-eat-dog -dog world of the paparazzi photographer, there's no patch more crucial than Oxford Street, where a steady stream of stars come to work, shop and play. No one knows this better than leading celebrity snapper Andy Barnes. You've got to be there at the right time, you've got to have the, uh, the right equipment. I mean, I'm all kitted out and it's all about preparation and also perhaps sometimes just that little bit of luck can help you just to get the right moment. And today, Andy's got a hot tip he's hoping will land him some lucrative picture sales. The auditions for ITV's Britain's Got Talent show are taking place at the Dominion Theatre at the east end of the street, and the celebrity judges are due to arrive. We're expecting uh, some really good names to turn up, people the, the likes of Simon Cowell. They always sell really well in, in magazines. They're always absolutely brilliant sort of, um, price-wise. Yesterday, the show's judges staged a red carpet entrance at the front door of the theatre, especially for the press. But Andy's learnt there's a second day of auditions, and all four judges, Simon Cowell, David Walliams, Amanda Holden and Alicia Dixon, are expected to make a low-key entrance to the theatre. What's going on? Britain's Got Talent. Oh, is it here? Yeah. Oh, I need to realise. Do you like Simon Cowell? See if he gets out of that car. No. Not through me. <laughs> oh, well, I hope you see him. Yeah, so do I. The problem for Andy is he doesn't know where the stars will be arriving. There are at least three separate entrances, a good distance apart. At the stage door at the back, Andy thinks he might have the field to himself. Have any of the judges actually arrived yet? Nothing at all. Brilliant. That's lovely, that. But it's not long before other snappers are on the case. Andy goes on the hunt for insider information. Do you know if they'll be coming this way? We've been told front doors. Oh, really? They're going straight in at the front door? Yeah. Lovely. OK. Andy heads back to the front. Getting this right could mean the difference between thousands of pounds of picture sales or nothing at all. He was just saying that if it's quiet, he might drop them off here and then they walk through the front door. But then the driver might think that it's a little bit too busy, so he might just take them around the corner and, and put them through the stage door. Well, if I hear that uh, they've gone round the back, we leg it. We leg it as fast as we can possibly go. And I've got a bad leg. But with the arrival imminent, Andy suddenly gets fresh info. You're putting the back exit through there. Over there on the right. Lovely. They'll definitely be that way, is it? 100%. Lovely. Thank you. We better wrap. Uh, I think we better go and see if we can get something around the back here now. And he gets moving, bad leg and all. Good for a bit of exercise. And just in time, as David Walliams' Range Rover swoops in. Hi, David. Hi, David. Hi, David. Hi, David. Hi, David. Oh, that was a bit rubbish, wasn't it? Didn't get anything at all, eh? I got him in the car, so that's, it's not too bad. I got a couple of frames out of it, so it's not too bad. But if I'm honest with you, he can be a bit. He doesn't like just posing up outside. Andy's hoping for better luck with the ladies. I reckon Alicia or Amanda will probably do something for us there. And he hasn't got long to wait. No, hold on a minute. Here's Amanda. Let's hope we get a better shot than uh, Mr. Williams. Guys, is there any chance we can get a photo? But today, Amanda's not keen on being seen. Oh, clever stuff. Oh, look at that. 
all he gets is a view of her footwear. Just look at the state of that. That is incredible, that is. The lengths they've gone to to hide what she's wearing. Just unbelievable. This is new territory for Andy, a celebrity that, today at least, doesn't want publicity. Later, we'll see if he gets any more luck bagging himself a cowl. There's quite a few snappers there, but we've all got very, very little. Standing out from the crowd amongst Oxford Street's 200 shops are its four huge department stores. These giants of the retail world have battled for customers on the street for decades, and each seeks to outdo the others with events and offerings to entice shoppers in. And today, John Lewis has got an event it's hoping will do exactly that. It's St David's Day, the National Day of Wales. And to celebrate it, the shop's food hall has lined up a special series of events. Half a dozen boutique Welsh food producers have sent samplers to promote their products in store. Hi, would you like to try? Food sampler Lucinda is here on behalf of pate maker Patchwork. Hello, how are you? Thank you. This is tequila and cranberry with a chicken liver base. OK? South Wales baker James's family have been making classic Welsh cakes and pastries for three generations. Today, he's hoping shoppers like his Barra Brith, a type of cake. We soak the sultanas in tea overnight. And you've got the mixed spices in there. They all have a combination going on. Well, I hope you enjoy my product for St David's Day. Thank you very much. At the end of the day, all the samplers will get a sales report to see if they've hit their targets. To add a bit of theatre to the event, the store's pulling out all the stops. There's a harpist on hand to accompany the food tasting. And they've got another special Welsh treat in store. They've booked a choir to perform some of the Principality's most famous songs as part of a surprise flash mob. But this morning, choir leader Alice has already run into difficulties. The um, alto in, in our group fell over in the tube and fell down some stairs and hit her head and had to go to casualty. So frantically trying to call everyone we knew in London who was a singer and could speak Welsh and who knew the songs that we were going to sing. And one of those calls has found them a saviour in the shape of Becca. So I've just arrived here and um, hopefully I'll know the songs and maybe I'll be able to make up some harmony. So hopefully it'll be OK. My peace, Marianne, where do you believe? First rehearsals do not bode well. Sorry, I'll do that again. <laughs> Apologise. The choir plan to surprise shoppers, coming out of nowhere as store staff and customers to sing traditional Welsh songs. So I'm just putting on this staff apron so that I blend in with with the rest of the Waitrose staff. Well, a flash mob is quite a bizarre thing to do anyway, and to just know that you're doing it in about half an hour is even more bizarre. I reckon people will stop and just stare. Later, it's Yaki Dar at the food hall as the harp plays, the public tuck in, and the choir get ready to sing. The undercover Oxford Street Police team are on the hunt for the criminal gangs targeting cash machines. As they patrol, they think they've spotted two men behaving suspiciously. They could be planting skimmers on Oxford Street. Time to find out. I think I have them now. Please. Please. The two men have just withdrawn cash, but no one has seen if they were interfering with the cash machines. They seem surprised and are cooperating. Is this your card, sir? Yeah. Right, saw you earlier hanging around the cash point further down the road. On that basis, you get a lot of distraction thefts and a lot of devices put on ATMs. Going to search you for articles for use in fraud and for stolen property. And Officer Paul Penrose has met this man before. It's not the first time I remember this guy before in the another street, but before a long time, maybe six months. This is second time he's made me uh, the check. Right. Yeah, before, but maybe. <laughs> Number three, you get a free cup of coffee. Thankfully, everyone's smiling. 
Despite some of their behavior matching that of the skimmers, checks have confirmed the men have no previous and nothing suspicious on them. He walks very fast, going from ATM to ATM, but uh, it's all checked out. Sometimes an innocent explanation. So, have a good day. Have a good day, you too. The skimming gangs are hard to catch, and although this was a false alarm, stops like this are essential to try and root out the real criminals. And as Darren and the team continue their patrols, it's not long before they find more examples of the gangs at work. Another skimming device on another ATM. I've come along today, notice an ATM that has been targeted before, seen as a device on it from my experience before. Darren takes a closer look at this much more sophisticated skimmer. Your car to go in there and there'll be electronics before it goes into the machine to skim your card, take the details off your card like any magnetic strip reader. They insert into the mouth, glue it in position. Your card goes through there, normally into the machine. You use the card, per the machine perfectly normally, but as it's gone through, the electronics in here have skimmed your card details. So this is the camera. So that's been affixed across the legitimate cash sign with their own, as you can see, like that. And it has a pinhole camera here, that tiny pinhole there. We'll read, you just put your pin number in. So they've got your card details and your pin number. Then they can go away and make their own cards. With the skimmer in his hands, Darren recognises an opportunity to try and catch himself an elusive cash machine crook. Rather than remove the skimmer, he makes it safe and decides to wait across the street in a nearby handbag shop. He hopes the crooks will turn up to retrieve their device. After 45 minutes of waiting, someone is using the machine and looks to be tampering with it. Unfortunately, it turns out to be a vigilant member of the public and he's told the bank staff. Darren decides to step in. Yeah. We've been watching. We saw it a while ago and we've been waiting for somebody to come and take it off. Obviously not you guys. Sorry, guy. Because I use this machine quite regularly. Um, I was just trying to slide my card in and it was a little bit funny this time. And then all those things happening, especially in this area. Then I saw that the cash sign here was a little bit uh, sticking uh, out. So I touched it and it moved. It got me scared for a second, but... Thanks, guys. So I'm, I'm uh, no, 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 that's, a, that's one of those things. We were monitoring it for about an hour. They'll leave it on for up to five, six hours, getting everybody who uses that uh, card machine its details. So that could be hundreds of people being victims of that type of crime. A few of those devices put in the area soon adds up to thousands of victims. So it's a priority crime. So far, Darren's hunt for the ATM gangs has drawn a blank twice. Later, there's another gang in action. Will Darren's luck change? Right, let's go. Outside the Dominion Theatre, and celebrity photographer Andy Barnes is not having a good day. Just look at the state of that. That is incredible, that is. He was hoping to catch exclusive photos of the Britain's Got Talent judges. He got a glimpse of David Walliams, but Mr. Amanda Holden. Well, nobody's got anything at all. I just, I just find it quite amusing that the, the lengths they went to of trying to hide. He heads back to the front of the theatre in the hope that Simon Cowell will be arriving there. It's getting close now because he's only got about another quarter of an hour before he's got to be at the event. So, but we're looking at about five, five or six points where he could possibly be. So, Andy waits it out at the front. But all the action is happening at the other door, and Alicia Dixon sneaks in away from Andy's lens. Then Andy sees a Rolls Royce sweeping past, heading round the back. He throws the bad leg back into action. It's the main event. Talent judge and media mogul Simon Cowell. I've seen Simon. Yeah. Are you well? Good. Good, good, good. Thank you. How are you doing? Okay. Just get one shot. Just one more looking back, sorry. 
Ja, vi tänker... Är det en nice one? Oh, damn it, I'm getting too old for this game there. And that's it for the day. It's been a mixed bag for Andy. He missed Alicia and Amanda Hid, but he's landed Walliams and the biggest fish of all, Cowl. They're not bad. Cowl always sells, so that'll pay for a few coffees. I'm going to get these pictures <laughs> sent off now. So uh, on to the next one. Good. That's the magic of Oxford Street. You never know what's going to happen from one day to the next. John Lewis Oxford Street is celebrating St David's Day with an action-packed Welsh food tasting. What's it got to do with Wales? It's made in Wales, oh, right. in Rhythm. Lucinda is one of a dozen food samplers, getting shoppers to try and hopefully buy Welsh produce. Oh, hello, I'm feeding me. <laughs> and lunchtime has just arrived. You can take it from here if you want. Thank you very much. OK, bye-bye, take care. At lunchtime, people are ridiculously hungry. They, they realise something's going on, and it's amazing how people's behaviour changes. They just ponder, and then they just linger, and then they come back for another one, and then they linger another one. It's really funny. Hello, how are you? She ain't interested in any product. She's a hungry shopper. Meanwhile, on the other side of the store, a specially arranged choir is getting ready to stage a flash mob in the food hall. They plan to surprise shoppers by coming out of nowhere as shop staff and customers and singing traditional Welsh songs. They've had an enforced lineup change already after their original alto had an accident on the tube. But with substitute Becca in place, they're ready for the kickoff. It went very well. We were all quite nervous for it, but um, it went really well, I think. I felt quite strange because it's not every day you see someone next to the Chris file in Waitrose just burst into song, performing in the middle of Oxford Street and making people stop for a second amidst the madness. was quite an experience, actually. Well, it was quite good, actually, that I only knew about this half an hour ago, so I didn't have time to get nervous or think about what I was doing, basically get, in, get the job done. Meanwhile, back at the food tasting, their aim was to get people trying Welsh foods they might not have tried before, and hopefully to make some sales. It's been busy. Tequila and cranberries sold out. I've had one negative customer, and then I killed her with lots of love, and she left happy. I'm quite tempted to get a sales report. I usually get a sales report after I've done a sampling. It makes it boosts me and motivates me. And it's the moment of truth for Lucinda and her fellow samplers. Has it gone well? Yeah, it has, yes. Oh, it has. Thank you. OK, so at least we sold something of everything. I've done OK. I mean, I think I could have done better. Oh, here he is now. It's been actually quite good. We had about 74 percent sales, so I'm quite happy for that afternoon. The figures show that James has sold three quarters of the stock he has in the food hall. And with that, it's all over for the day. And as far as food hall manager Tony's concerned, it's been a successful one for Welsh food, Welsh wine and Welsh song. Sales really good, especially on the, the Welsh cakes. So I'm going to head home for a bit of cake and a nice glass of wine. The Oxford Street Police team are dealing with a priority problem. 
gangs targeting cash machines to get their hands on shoppers' money. The ATM thieves are hard to catch, but back at the station, Darren thinks he might have just found a crucial lead. Footage has come in from an Oxford Street bank of another scam being committed. So this is a uh, classic ATM distraction theft. The two males here have targeted this female. So they've encouraged her to use the ATM. She'd initially used it, but had problems with it. And they've convinced her to go back. And as you can see, he's taken an angle where he can see her put the pin number. The second member comes in and he's using a piece of paper to confuse the person at the ATM. And he's got the bank card, told his mate he's got the bank card and off he goes with it. She's now noticed something's wrong, but the second one's here to reassure her, oh, the card may have been swallowed by the machine. They're working a team, doing a number of these jobs across London every day. This female lost her card and the guys then went to a nearby ATM and withdrew cash from the machines. And it turns out the gang tried the same distraction crime at the same machine just a few weeks before. But have they made a mistake? Darren Bond is a police super recognizer with a unique ability to recall the faces and features of regular offenders to help identify culprits on the street and on grainy CCTV. And in this case, he thinks he might have recognized the man in the footage. He's got a name and an address where his family lives. So this morning, the team are heading up the motorway where they hope they'll find the suspect from the bank. He's got plenty of previous for ATM distraction thefts, and that's what we're looking at him today. I've ID'd him from CCTV. Darren and the team have no way of knowing if their man is at the target address. The number of thefts related to ATMs has trebled in recent years. Hoping to make a dent in these figures, Darren heads in. Okay. Right, let's go. Not quite as uh, picturesque or as affluent as Oxford Street, but uh, say we've got to go to the criminals where they live and get them out of their houses, and then we'll take them back to a nice, pleasant Westminster. Morning, is at home. He's in prison. He's in prison at the moment, okay. Amazingly, the suspect is already behind bars for something else. How long has he been in since? Uh, yesterday. For six years. For six years? Well, we'll have to go and talk to him in prison and uh, about some other offences. He's been sentenced to six years imprisonment from what his mother is telling us. That hasn't come up on the national computer yet. Uh, for similar offences that I imagine that we're the wanted to talk to him about. It turns out the man was sentenced only the day before for a serious motoring offence. Darren's delighted that a serious criminal is safely behind bars, but his fight against the ATM gangs is far from over. It's an ongoing war, but a war we're coming up against and tackling as hard as we can.